Welcome back to Little Liam Rose. My name is Summer Noel, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to do a super cool new technique called dinosaur skin. Um, this was originally kind of one of my uh, team members' ideas. She has this brilliant creative brain, I don't even know where it came from, um, to try to use the UV resin on a cup um, and with soap. And so we kind of, I kind of took her idea and tweaked it and twerked it a little bit and we played with it and we came up with this. She actually came up with this. I just kind of tweaked it a little bit to make it my little spin on it, but this really came from Penny Crosby's brain. She's amazing. Um, and she said, yes, make a tutorial and run with it and show it to the world. So thank you, Penny Crosby, for this amazing idea. Um, and uh, now we're gonna show it to you. So what you wanna do is you wanna start with your cup. You can use any type cup you want. Um, I'm gonna work on a 20 skinny. Um, for now, this cup has been prepped and sand, so it's been sanded. You want to wear a dust mask when you sand because you don't want to get those little medical particle, metal particles in your mouth, um, into your lungs. Um, I used 320 grit, um, so you can use 320 grit or 220 grit sandpaper. You sand down and then you very gently, you don't need a rough surface, um, and then you spray paint it and I chose black and you will see why. The black really makes the chameleon flakes pop out. So what we're going to be working with is chameleon flakes. UV resin, black alcohol, no, sorry, I'm not alcohol ink, black epoxy dye. This is on our Amazon list. Um, we're going to be working with Dawn soap and water. It's a basically like a three quarters soap and one quarter water. We've got tissue paper. You need either tissue or paper towels, some stir sticks, a silicone brush, and some mixing cups. And you need a UV light. Um, you can do this in the sunlight, but it takes... Uh, it, it works best results come from a UV light like this. Again, we will have this link to you guys down below underneath in the description under this tutorial. Where to find one inexpensive on Amazon, we'll have it for you. All right, so let's just jump right in. Um, we're going to take this and we are going to take uh, the UV resin. And you want to work in small sections, guys. Um, you don't want to get too crazy and out of control because otherwise it's going to get real drippy on you and you're going to lose control of it real fast and get these drips that go down the side and then they're going to cure that way under the UV light. Then we're going to take um, our, uh, these are the chameleon flakes. These are on our website, littleleanrose.com. And we're going to drop the chameleon flakes right on into there. And we are going to stir them up into that little bit of UV resin. You want kind of a high concentration. Can you guys see how cool that looks in the light? You're gonna see it once I push it right on out of the cup. So we're just gonna jump right in. I don't even have to clean up or anything because we are ready to go. So we are gonna scrape this out of the, of the cup, right onto this cup. You really wanna do this away from any sunlight because like I said, the sunlight will affect this almost immediately and you do not want that. You want it, you want to be completely in control of what's going on with your resin. And if there's any sunlight, even ambient sunlight or indirect sunlight coming into your room, um, it's going to affect this right away and you're not gonna be able to spread it very well. So then I take this little cup and I set it way off to the side so that the UV resin light does not affect that little cup. And I'm gonna take my silicone brush and I'm gonna brush it along in a thin layer across the top of this section. Again, we're gonna do section by section. I'm in a very, very well ventilated room. Doors open, fans on, everything um, to, to make sure it's safe for breathing and, uh, and all that stuff. We wanna make sure it's nice and healthy. All right, so now the next little tricky part. So now we're gonna get the dinosaur skin going. Okay, so you can see how I've got this in the thin layer to the point where it's not even um, dripping down the sides. It doesn't have the ability to even try to drip down the sides. It's because it's not thick. It's a nice thin layer, but you can see because of the, how much uh, chameleon flakes we added, it has a nice, good, vibrant amount of that. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your water and soap. You wanna have your tissues ready to go. We're gonna, you wanna always make sure you put the cap back on your UV resin so it does not get affected. Oh, I forgot to put the ink. So normally, oh boy, guys. So normally you want to put a, two drops of the ink. So we'll see how this one goes. It should be okay because it's backed with black, but I always usually add the ink 
two little drops just to make sure. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna blow the bottom of the, this, the water uh, soap mixture and we're gonna blow bubbles. And we're get the bu gonna get the bubbles to come kind of overflow out here and almost look like frog eggs or fish eggs. And they're gonna kind of overflow and we're gonna bring them down and let them sit on the cup and all the way down. Then we're gonna quickly grab our UV light, pick it up and hold it over the top. So I'm gonna do it really, really quick, but you guys are gonna see the process and then we'll get it going. Here we go. So you could do small bubbles or big bubbles. If you prefer a smaller look, you could take these little baby bubbles like this and place them on top. If you want the bigger bubble look, you do the bigger bubbles. It's really personal preference. So here we go. There we go, and we got them on top of that UV resin. They're kind of falling off the sides. So we're gonna bring them up. This is why you wanna have your uh, your silicone brush soaked in the soap water, so that, and then you're gonna immediately put it under the UV light. Um, you wanna have your UV, uh, sorry, your silicone brush soaked in the soap water so that when it touches the bubbles, it doesn't pop them. You can, so you can move them around where you need, and the, the brush is so soapy that the bubbles do not pop. So they stay where they're at while the UV light is curing up that section. So this is kind of the tedious, boring part where you have to just stare at the top of my UV light for a minute. Uh, but the big reveal is coming. It's really, really fun. So really, the, the consistency actually does matter. Let's clean this off so we don't have a big mat, wet mess. Um, you don't want to have too much soap. If you have too much soap, it just slides right off the, the top of the UV resin. So that's why the ratio mixture is important. Um, like I said, a three to one mixture, almost like our UV, our regular molding epoxy mixture is a three to one. You kind of want your soap mixture to be a three to one. Um, when I was going about three quarters, um, the, the more soap I had in the water, the less, uh, the, the faster it slid off of the UV resin and you didn't get a very good look. So this, you want it to set for the full 120 seconds under the light. So this light I specifically recommend because the bottom is removable. Um, I just took the bottom off this UV lamp so that I can hold it over the top. Otherwise it wouldn't have fit inside the UV lamp. So that's why I like this lamp. We're going to start it again for another 30 seconds. That'll give it 130 seconds. And then we get the big reveal and you guys get to see it. So that was with the Little Ian Rose UV Epoxy um, UV Resin. Uh, the Chameleon Flakes Black, alcohol, uh, black Ink uh, Epoxy Ink. Just soap and water and some tissue with a, a tumbler that is base painted black. So I've kind of been toying with it and playing with it. And I have found that I personally like it based with black better. Um, Penny uh, based hers with a metallic silver and did the green U UV resin. I mean the green uh, epoxy flakes and it looked gorgeous. So really that again comes down to personal preference. So now you're just going to dab that off and you're going to move to the next section. So see I already did a little piece already today. I'll do two pieces and then I'll finish the rest off. I've got the whole other side. Um, and we'll do it in high speed, but I want to do at least two sections where you guys can see it. So I will do one section here. You can see the difference. I don't know if you guys can see this. See here, there was some small bubbles here, and then the rest were some big bubbles, and down here were some small bubbles. So it does do a different texture for the small and large bubbles. All right, so we're going to bring up our tools that we use for the, in the UV so we can recycle them. We don't have to reuse them. And we are going to make some more. We're going to mix up some more dinosaur skin. All right, we are going to do three scoops. We're gonna do two drops of the black dye. That was three, but you know, a little 
little here, a little there. Stir it up. And drip it down. I roll up the towels and I use uh, rubber bands to hold them together. That way the bubbles, when they drip down, it catches it. Um, otherwise, you're going to have a very soapy table. You can use pool noodles or whatever you have. Um, but like I said, I just use old shop rags. I buy them at Costco. I guess they're not old shop rags because they're perfectly white, but they're basically shop rags. And then I'm going to put these two tools off to the side. We're going to take our brush. I'm going to make sure that it spreads here. Nice and easy, easy peasy. So I'm just gonna do these two sections in a slow version, and then I'm gonna speed it up because you guys don't need to watch me do the same thing over and over and over. Once you get it, you can always rewind if you need to watch it again and kind of get the technique down. You can rewind it, um, but I'll do the rest of the cup, um, the rest of the dinosaur scan in high speed. We'll just do these first few rounds low speed so you can kind of get the idea of it. Like I said, again, if you need to uh, stop and rewind it at any time to rewatch anything we're doing, that is also a possibility. There we go. Beautiful, okay, there we go. Move that off screen, grab our soap. get our light going up and on you want to move quickly because the soap will move it's slippery as snot little boogers it's slippery as three-year-old little boogers and i know because i have three three-year-olds <laughs> they weren't impressed by this cup by the way <laughs> i said look it's dinosaur skin they're like oh wow where's the glitter they are three three-year-olds and they are obsessed with glitter so but they're pretty fun. They want a real dinosaur. They think we could have one as a pet. They asked if we could get a real dinosaur for a pet. I said, no, dad would kill us. I told my husband we were gonna get a, another puppy for Valentine's day. He just laughed. I said, well, that's not a no. He just laughed some more. I said, you're still not saying no. All right, here we go. Halfway through. This is that hurry up and wait type scenario where you gotta hurry up and get the bubbles on and then you gotta sit and just wait, wait, wait for the UV light. I guess I could try to turn it so you guys, well, no, because the bubbles will, maybe these bubbles will shift. So maybe you guys can see what's happening. I've just got the UV light. I don't even know if that's helping, but you can see the UV light and the bubbles inside. The bubbles slowly pop away and just leave that texture behind. Sorry, guys. I have been sick. When you have triplets, they bring home everything. They bring home everything from daycare. Every little, tiny little bug. This is the part of the YouTubes that I hate. I get very anxious. I just want to see it. That's why we're going to do the rest in high speed so you guys can see it. Quickly, quickly. So if this is boring to you, just zip forward until it looks like I'm moving really, really fast. And then you can watch me in high speed. That's my favorite part. I actually find watching myself work in high speed to be super relaxing. All right, there we go. There's a lot of soap on that rag. Let's turn it over. Wipe any excess off. So what you would want to do ultimately is take this and wash it, the surface, before you do your layer of epo full layer of epoxy but you can see we still have more to do so we're going to do that i'm going to set up we're going to do that on high speed and we'll be right back Oh, 
All right, guys, here we go. We have um, our dinosaur skin or dragon scales or whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it dinosaur skin. I think it looks very dinosaur-esque. Um, I have my dino mold ready to go because we mixed enough epoxy to probably fill up our, our uh, dinosaur nails, the claws that we're going to add on. We have epoxy A and B ready to go here. These are both, this is an FDA compliant epoxy. Um, if you don't know what that is, you don't want to be working with cups unless you're using FDA compliant epoxy. That means it's going to come in contact with somebody's mouth. You have to make sure that it's got the no chemicals in it that are going to cause harm to the person that is putting that to their mouth. So if you don't know um, if a brand of epoxy of if a brand of epoxy is FDA compliant, you can drop in the drop down menu below. I have a bunch of different epoxies that are mentioned and linked, um, and that will help you find one that is. Um, so we're going to just mix them together. You, we're going to mix part A and part B. Like I said, I'm mixing a large batch because we are going to flood coat this to help uh, cover all those ripples and bumps over the dragon skin. The dinosaur skin. So we're mixing A and B. So when you mix part A and part B, a chemical reaction happens. Um, and it takes about, it takes 72 hours to cure, but it should take about nine to 12 hours to not be sticky to the touch. Now you don't want to actually touch this with your bare skin until the 72 hour mark. It's not safe. Um, it, it might not seem like a big deal at first, and you might not have a reaction, but you can over time, if you keep exposing your skin to epoxy, you can build up a, a like an allergy to it, and it can actually start causing some serious problems. What you can't see off camera is that I have a chemical respirator on. That's why I sound a little bit like Darth Vader. Um, it's very, very important to wear your PPE, even with a, an epoxy that says no VOC. Um, we don't want to find out in 20 years that just because it said no VOC we didn't, and we didn't wear our masks that we're all dying of lung cancer. So I am really, really big on health also because if you are breathing in these fumes and you have, a, and you have an allergic reaction to it, that is most likely what's going to be. Even if it says no VOC, it does not mean that you won't have an allergic reaction to it. It just means that there's no harmful chemicals happening when you mix them together to breathe in. But that does not mean that you won't be allergic. You can still be very, very allergic to the ingredients that are in here. So I'm wearing nitrile gloves. These are special gloves. These are not latex. This is a special glove called nitrile. And I am using a silicone stir stick to mix this. I have a special mixing machine that will mix this for me. Uh, but I am only slightly displaced today as it is swag week. So I'm not in my normal filming area because if you know my Facebook group, Swag Week is a big deal in our group, um, so I'm slightly displaced if my epoxy mixer is in there. So I am just mixing this with a stir stick in a plastic cup. I prefer using my machine. I usually would have had it going before I even started filming, but I want you guys to see the process of it being mixed. I'm scraping all the sides really well. I'm making sure the bottom is scraped. You don't want to leave any epoxy um, not mixed because it will leave a soft spot and that will mess up your cup. Soft spots or spots that don't cure are toxic. And uh, you basically have to scrape that spot out or sand it out and remove it before continuing because if you add another layer on top of it to try to cover up that soft spot, you could actually, be, it could be very, very dangerous for the person you give the cup to if they have the allergy as well because those chemicals will leach through the next layer and could cause some issues down the road. So you want to make sure that your epoxy is very well mixed through all areas. All right, so we're going to take this and lay this on our silicone mat. We have a silicone mat down. That's going to catch any drips. Um, epoxy does not stick to silicone, so that will keep our work area clean. This is a silicone stick, and we'll be able to reuse this. You can just clean and pop off the silicone in the morning. So, or you can wipe it down with the baby and wipe at the same time that you are working. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to go ahead and gloss it on as the cup turns. I'm using a silicone applicator brush. This is kind of messy. Like I said, I'm doing a flood coat to get a nice thick coat over all those ridges. Getting our 
first layer on. This is going to be a really, really fun pump. You want to make sure you do all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. You want to touch all the spots. Anywhere you see a spot that's shy of epoxy, just dip your brush into your cup, grab a little bit more and keep going. Epoxy is self-leveling. That is why we have it on this special machine. This is a cup turner. So if you are new to this and you've never seen one of these, this is your first time watching one of my tutorials. Uh, this is a special machine. This one I actually worked with an engineer and we designed. Uh, this is our brand, it's on our website. Uh, I love the speed at which it rotates. It gives you a lot of work time. It's a very workable speed. But there's a lot of them out there. I'm not the only one with them. Um, there are, there's available options. I even have some on our Amazon shop. A little bit there, so there we go. It looks like it's pretty well coated. Now with this dinosaur skin one, you, oops, I forgot, we gotta get the butt. But you know what I'm gonna do? There's been a little bit of epoxy that has dripped off the bottom. I'm gonna scoop that up and we're gonna epoxy the butt. Don't forget your butt. Um, I did not put any dinosaur skin on the butt. I wanna make sure it stays level. Um, I might add some spray paint or something fun, but I might just leave it black this time because it's a little more masculine that way. All right, looks like we got really good coverage here. I'm looking for any fish eyes or any little spots that might not um, have epoxy on it. I'm just gonna give it one little turn around. Now here is where, this is the only cup that I do where I don't always worry about bubbles because sometimes the bubbles give it texture, which you don't normally want. But this cup, the texture we like. Uh, so we will just keep adding layers. I don't even see any micro bubbles right now. Um, our epoxy that we have uh, does not create bubbles. It's, it, it's very, 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 very awesome epoxy. Uh, so I'm not really seeing, I'm just saw a little spot that had too much epoxy. So I just kind of pulled it off and added it to the butt. All right, so now we let that one going. We're going to leave it turning, and we are going to work on our dinosaur feet. So what I'm going to do with this is, that looks like quite a bit of epoxy, but we're going to go for it. So now I'm going to take a scooper, and I am going to take, these are our chameleon flakes. So this is the same flake that we used for this part of the cup, but it's a different color. This is the uh, green to purple, I believe, and this is our perfect blue. So they're going to stand out. We, we, want the, um, we want the claws to definitely stand out off of the cup. So we're going to add this to this epoxy and mix it in completely into the epoxy. And then we're going to pull it into the mold. And this will cure up along with this cup overnight. Um, and I just realized I forgot my black dye. I'm going to be right back.
All right, here we go, guys. We are going to work on our claws. So I told you guys they are going to be a different color. These are the, these have a lot more black dye in them. They're going to be a little bit more funky, but we're going to make the actual talons be uh, gilded with gold. So we are going to take our UV resin and I'm going to do, I'm going to apply that with, you can use um, their special glue that you can, really any glue works. You can, special glue that uh, um, you can use to put on the gilded gold leafing, but I am gonna show you how to just use it with the same UV resin that we're already using since you've already got that product because you're using it on the cup. I'm gonna make sure that cup stays out of the way of the UV light. I'm gonna take the talon and I'm gonna coat it, just the part that we want the gold on. And then I'm gonna stick it under the UV light for like mm, five to 10 seconds just to get it tacky. And then we're going to take our gilded gold. This is something you might have received from Little Lean Rose in your swag bag or you already have in your craft shop. And we're going to tack it on there. And have a gold talon on our nice little piece here. On our dinosaur claw. Sorry if I was out of frame there. I'm very zoomed in. I'm not used to being this zoomed in on the camera. There we go. So there's one. How cool is that? That's going to look so cool under the epoxy on that tumbler. Looks like there's a little spot right on the edge. Perfect. So we're going to repeat that with all three. Here we go. Just enough um, of the UV resin to coat. Just a little coat, not even a thick coat, just enough to get it sticky for that gold gilding leaf to grab onto. Put it under the light. This one we can even put under the light to let it cure. Okay, then we're going to take the gold leafing. Again, some of you may have received this in one of your swag bags and just didn't know what to do with it. Um, this is what the swag bags kind of are for, is to kind of make you think outside the box. But there's also a lot of projects that I do that will use those items. Sorry, it might get loud. We, it sounds like we have a helicopter flying overhead. Perfect, beautiful. Okay, we're gonna do that one as well. All right, now we wanna make these nice and shiny. So I'm gonna just have, take my gloved finger, get a tiny, tiny bit, and we are gonna rub it over. This is UV resin again. We're just going to rub it over the ta the um, actual, uh, what part of this would be called, the, f the phalange of the dinosaur, the finger of the dinosaur. Just to shine up that outer edge, that outer layer. Start getting that beautiful chameleon coating to show through. We can also add some UV resin on the outside of the gold to help keep it in place as well. Again, make sure you wear gloves. This stuff is 
very difficult to get off your skin if you get it on there. Um, it's not toxic, but it is messy. So it's a lot easier just to remove your gloves. Okay, we're just dabbing it on over the gilding. making sure the talon, I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but the green is really starting to pop out of those claws. We use the different color. We use more dark, um, we use more black ink and we use a different color of flake just to make it stand out a little bit more off the cup. So really just kind of rubbing the UV resin into the grooves, tapping it over the gold leaf. Beautiful. And this is just the mold that they came in. We're just using the back side to let them sit on. And now we're gonna stick them under the light for 120 seconds. And we'll be back. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna put on coat number two. You can see it's been buffed. Um, a lot of beginners get a little confused because it looks real rough. Once we add the second coat of epoxy, all those sanding marks will go away. So if you're new and you sand and you freak out because it dulls your cup, don't worry when you add this, after you've washed it with Dawn soap, let it completely dry, all those dull spaces will go away when you put the second layer of epoxy on. So don't worry about that, just keep on rolling. All right guys, we're gonna put you on high speed and add the second layer. Thank mm -hmm. you. 